Welcome back. This is part two of the C130 3D Cockpit 2.0 by Camelio. I'm sitting here on uh, runway 31 at Southport. Uh, in part one, we set up the autopilot, and this time we're going to fly a circuit using the autopilot. I know it's a little low altitude for using the autopilot, but it's a good demonstration of uh, how the autopilot works. So I'm sitting here on the runway. I've got the uh, airspeed preset to 150 knots. In fact, I'm going to raise that up a little bit to 180. So I just hold that over the vertical speed here. Or sorry, the altitude setting, sliding it across. And I'm going to take that up to 180. That'll keep me from having to do it too soon. In case you didn't see that, that's right down at the bottom of the speed ribbon. I've got a vertical velocity or vertical speed indication of 502 knots for uh, vertical climb and it's set at 2,000 feet with the heading of 311. Going back out and take off the brakes. We've got our clearance and we're going to head off. Brakes off, rolling up the throttle. One thing I did notice is that the auto throttle seems to be delinked from the uh, flight director. So if you disconnect the flight director, the auto throttle is still going to remain engaged until you disconnect that. Just through 50 knots, we're looking for 110 knots with these uh, flaps at 50%. Through 70 knots, 80 knots. 90 knots, 100, oh, we're already starting to rotate, let's get it off the ground, I guess we had a bit of a crosswind there, off the ground, positive rate of climb, gear up, just letting me know I'm there to the ground and I've got my gear down, silence that the auto throttle and I hit the flight director and vertical speed and heading. Now my hands are off the control. You can see I'm slightly off the heading so the aircraft's banking to pick that up. Wouldn't normally engage the autopilot this low to the ground but I'm just giving you a demonstration of how the aircraft can pick it up. The Herc's pretty slow to turn. You can see how they're long lanky burnt banks. This will stabilize shortly. Kind of sways back and forth there. If I zoom in here, you can see the uh, magenta line for the airspeed. It's got the uh, altitude blocked off for 2,000 feet. Oftentimes it will overshoot that a little bit. If I knock off a bit of flaps, that will help. So I'll knock off a little bit of flap and that will allow it to uh, intercept the 2,000. It's going to overshoot and then come back down. Speed's climbing up now 170, almost to 180, which is the hold speed. And I'm going to raise that up a little bit as we're talking here. Let's hold that over top. See it's at 200 now. And I've got it up to 220. 224. I'll roll that back just a little bit. There we go, 219, 220. You gotta be careful about getting your head into the cockpit too much while you're doing this. Uh, you can really get overtaken and uh, don't want to have a controlled flight into terrain. Okay, now we're stabilized at the 2,000 feet. I can start to take in some of my flaps. And I'm going to turn uh, on my crosswind leg. So I just hold the heading indicator. You can see the magenta line going there to 90 degrees from where we were. And this will be the start of our crosswind leg. the altitude spiked there a little bit as I was adjusting the speed. Raised up uh, near 2400 uh, feet. Dropping back down again. I'll drop some more flaps. And the flaps are all fully retracted. You can see that once you do that it really starts to drop in the altitude. You gotta be careful how quickly you take the flaps off. I've added another degree of flaps just to hold it here. Rolling out on the crosswind leg. Those flaps really have a big effect on it as you can see now it's climbing up again. Just uh, It's got four degrees of flaps. 
a little bit of overshoot so it's correcting again. Okay, that seemed to stabilize. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it onto the downwind leg. So I'm going to go parallel to the runway. So looking for heading 1-3. You can see the magenta line turning around there. And basically I'm putting it in line with the runway. If you look at the map view there, going a little bit closer, you can see those indicators as it's rotating around. CYPG uh, is the airport that we're going to, and PG is the ADF uh, outer marker. And we're going to fly beyond the outer marker and come on back in on, uh, on the glide slope and uh, intercept the ILS. You can see now in the bank here, just 1,980 feet supposed to hold 2,000. Uh, airspeed was set for 220. It's just coming into that now. Actually, it's set for 219. It's on 219. And you can see we're rolling up. That's my number eight view. You can see if I press my number seven view, that basically takes you up the left side and be looking over towards the airfield. Still kind of hard to see it in the distance, uh, these hazy fields, so it's always good to have the instrumentation to look at it. So we're just past PG on the map view. I like to go out normally about 45 degrees from that. Uh, I find it's a little easier to go further than that, uh, but if you're, uh, if you're not uh, pressed for time, you can go out a little bit further and make some more stable approach. And there we have it. We just had the ILS indicators show up on the map view. I'll just zoom in there a little bit. You can see the magenta line. And if you look on the uh, horizontal situation indicator over here, you can also see the magenta line. And there we go. Now we've got the glide slope appeared as well, and that's the diamond. And you're waiting for the diamond to intercept, but we have to turn runway heading first. I'm going to wait just a little further here before I start turning base leg. Uh, I find that if I turn in too early, it starts rushing and run into problems. Just looking in at the airspeed ribbon, and I can see 220, I start to get a little white bar there. I'm taking it that that's the uh, first flap indicator. I don't have the uh, V speeds for this uh, particular aircraft, so I'm not familiar with what they all are. Okay, I'm gonna start turning using my heading indicator on the uh, base leg. And as we do that, I'm going to introduce a little bit of flaps, and you may notice that the altitude pops up a little bit, and there it goes. And at this time, too, I'm also going to reduce a little bit of my airspeed. I know you say you wouldn't normally reduce airspeed as you're in a bank, but the aircraft's got plenty of power to handle that. And I'm just going to pop in another degree of flaps as we're going around the corner. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn even further to intercept uh, the ILS. You can see once you slow down, if you don't have your gear down and you're going slow enough, the, uh, the gear indicator will start barking at you. It knows you're low to the ground, you've got flaps out, but you don't have gear out. So it's saying, hey, do you want to think about that? Got two stages of flaps. Slow it down to 205 knots. Hold this here, make sure I've got airspeed, and I'm going to slow that down to about 180. 
and I'm going to track and watch that altitude as I do that. I may also start to get the gear indicator here, so I'm going to put the gear down. And another stage of flaps. See the aircraft, how it kind of seesaws back and forth while it's trying to intercept that. I'm keeping an eye on this uh, course deviation indicator as we start running into the center of the runway that's going to start to center. Uh, I'm going to try and intercept that partly with the heading indicator so I have a very shallow uh, angle to pick it up at. Speed's down 170. I'm going to drop another stage of flaps. You'll notice that the altitude will probably pop up again. And there it goes. I'll just slow the speed down a little bit more. Take it down to about 160. Like I said at the beginning of this, the speed isn't coupled with the flight director, so if you disengage the flight director, you don't have control of the throttle right away. So be aware of that. I'm going to make this intercept angle a little shallower. What we're doing is we're watching for this magenta line here on the uh, map to start sliding towards the center. We should be seeing the airfield very shortly out front. Pretty well see it by the time you're at that outer marker. Take the heading out just a little bit further so I can intercept it before I hit the other marker. It's a lot better than having to seesaw the aircraft all the way into the runway. If I zoom in on the map view too, you can see the uh, diamond, uh, magenta diamond is still at the top, so our glide slope is still far away. And if you're flying with X-Plane, you know you can pull the uh, glide slope up on your map view. Just checking our settings here, we're set at 167. I've got 50% flaps and uh, looking to intersect the ILS. First will be the localizer, which is the button up here. You can see LOC, and then uh, once I intercept the glide slope, I'll hit the approach. Should be coming in any time now. There it goes. Turn the heading first. Like most times when it happens, you happen to be looking another direction, and I'm gonna hit the localizer button now. So I've hit the localizer up there. You can see the airplane's gonna swing in and try and capture that. So you're gonna get this seesaw motion. That's what happens when you're talking and looking outside. I've got the airfield in the front there. So it's gonna seesaw back again. This is where you want to take over manually because this seesaw motion isn't all that great. And the next thing I'm doing is going to be looking for the glide slope to come in. Let that stabilize. If it keeps this up on the way in, uh, I'm going to be disconnecting here. Autopilot, that's why I say it's nice to intercept it from a good distance back to get through all these oscillations. Now it looks like the magenta line is making its way down now. So I'm going to engage the approach button. Slow the speed down. You 
taking it down to 140. And the glide slope's below us now, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to disengage the autopilot and fly this in. Autopilot's off, auto throttle's off, and now we're flying manually, runway in sight. Pulling the throttle back, another stage of flaps. Got four wide, a little high, but I'm not worried about that. Descending quite nicely. 130 knots. Another stage of flaps. Another stage of flaps. And we've got full flaps. Just slipping a little bit over to the left. Little throttle here. Reducing the throttle. 50, 40, 30, 20, Rotate. Little first landing, second landing. Hold steady on that. Oh, we're getting three landings for you today. That's awesome. Let's get back on the center line. I get the throttle all the way back, and I'm going to engage thrust reversers. Thrust reversers going on at 80 knots. Let's see how that slows it down quite a bit. Press reversers off. And there you have it. So you can see the autopilot can get you around. It's not necessarily designed for the low altitude maneuvers, but that's pretty well a good overview of all the features. I uh, hope you enjoyed that, and uh, uh, that's all we have for folks. Thanks a lot.